few things in this world more innately exciting to an aviator than the concept of a jet pack. Let's face it, we all want one. From the time we grew up as little kids, we kind of knew that sooner or later, you know, James Bond was going to set his aside and we were going to get it. It was going to be all ours. Yeah. You're the guy who got it. What the hell happened there? <laughs> right place, right time. Um, had a friend who was trained to be a pilot. Wasn't getting the hang of it. Got offered the job. Um, flew for a number of years. I'm with GoFast uh, now, flying the GoFast jet pack. It's actually right now the longest flying jet pack that's, it, that's actually working out there. Now you've made some news lately with this device. Yeah, I just set a uh, height and a distance record for a Guinness um, at the Royal Gorge in, uh, outside of Canyon City, Colorado. It's a 1,053 feet deep, the gorge's highest expansion bridge in the world, and the distance across is about 1,500 feet, quarter mile being 1,320. And um, we have the Go Fast games out there every year, which is a weekend of base jumping and bungee jumping off that bridge. And I've also flown like off of the rim, out a ways, and then back. And this year I flew from the middle of the bridge out to the north side of the canyon rim. And um, at the speeds I achieved on that, I knew that this machine could get all the way across. Now, wasn't totally sure of, of all of it. So what we did was went out to the drag strip and kind of did some run-ups just, you know, off the deck and uh, checking to see if the distance was even obtainable. Because we, what we didn't do is tell the media that, you know, everything because you don't want to. you got to leave them to, you know, to hype it up a little bit, and they did a really good job of it. And, um, yeah, stood there at the edge, about two feet away from that rim on this kind of little wooden deck they built me right on one of the rock outcroppings and on the north side and took off and had the machine probably doing 75 to 80 miles an hour, enough where the, the machine was kind of whiffling on me and, uh, you know, pushing a flat surface through the wind isn't, isn't so stable. So it uh, started shuffling around me a little bit, but I managed to uh, maintain it, and it's definitely the fastest I've ever taken and the longest I've ever flown. So it was a... Uh, it was definitely the hoo-ha flight of all for me, without a doubt. Cirrus Design's Vision SJ50 single-engine personal jet offers exceptional fuel efficiency, flexible seating for up to seven, advanced avionics, and all the Cirrus safety features you expect, including the Cirrus airframe parachute system. With its detailed design, the Cirrus Vision is technologically advanced, yet engineered to be simple to fly, to allow owner pilots more lifestyle pursuits than any other personal aircraft. Learn more about the Vision SJ50 at CirrusDesign.com. This is the GoFast Jetpack. It's a hydrogen peroxide rocket, actually. Um, these things were developed by Bell Aerospace back in the late 50s, early 60s, but most people call it Jetpack, so we give the world what they want. Basically, what you're dealing with is here is to kind of go backwards. Is This is the power plant, if you will. It's the catalyst pack, this silver-plated screen bed that the fuel, that the 90% H2O2 reacts with. And 90% peroxide, when it touches the silver, it's decomposing at about 1,400 degrees Fahrenheit. And the fuel is basically expanding 5,000 times its volume into steam. That's then in turn superheated, so you can't even see the steam when this thing is, once it's reacting. It comes down to the base, and you basically have the Venturi down there, or the rocket nozzle. That's speeding the velocity of the, of the pressure up to supersonic when it's exiting. When it exits, the exit is a half angle, and it actually speeds up even faster past this point. So you basically have a higher pressure against a lower pressure, and that's what's pushing the machine. This thing would fly on Mount McKinley or Everest the same as it would fly at the beach. Then what you have is you have the two outer tanks are the liquid hydrogen peroxide. This is about five and a half gallons. The center tank is compressed nitrogen gas, which is only pushing the fuel out of the tanks equally at the same time. And at about 530 PSI, I'm pushing that fuel through the valve here, which is, this is probably the most secretive part of all of rocket packs. So this cable is what's hooked to the throttle handle. So it's sitting here under pressure, and the minute I pull this piston out with, through, with the throttle forward there, it uh, allows the fuel to, to dump across the catalyst bed. Now you have the controls. Obviously this is the backboard and the harness holding me in. It's a five point here, in case I need to get out of it quick if I was to have a, a spill or a crash. This is your throttle, which is only for going up and coming down. It's also hooked to a stopwatch here price of a jet pack, blah, blah, this, this watch is priceless. And at any point, I can look down here now and see how much into my 33 seconds I'm going. When I'm in the mid-20s, I'm already descending and coming up on my, on my landing. Left side, you have yaw control, and there's two cables connected to this yoke. This basically allows you to rotate left and right, similar like a tail rotor on a helicopter, but this basically has vectoring rings or jet evaders that oppose the thrust in opposite directions. As this is deflecting the thrust forward on this one, the, the other side on your right is deflecting it backwards. That's allowing the, the machine to rotate. So then once you're going up and down the, to control this, as you can see, this is all connected to the thrust tubes. And it's just uh, gimbaled here, right on this, this joint back here. But to go forward, you're basically lifting off the ground and you drop your, the control handles down. 
that tips the tubes away from you in the back, the thrust tubes, and that starts pushing you forward. Now, to oppose that or to stop, you pull up on the control arms. This has a lot more, if you'll notice, uh, backup on it than it does forward. Because once you get going fast, you need twice as much to stop that. So you're gonna, you have to get the thrust drastically out in front of you. You've heard of this thing called WAS, right? The Wide Area Augmentation System lets you fly GPS glide path approaches without relying on ground-based landing aids. No VOR, no ILS, no problem. Fact is, WAS is so smart, it even knows what you're going to say next time you need it. And don't have it on board. Wah! Wah! I want my WAS now! I was really crying there for a second. You know, the future is everybody has always dreamed of this type of flight. Personal flight is just something that, you know, if it would be safe, everybody would do it. You know, even though heights aren't for everybody, you could just that, just the simple fact that you could beat traffic or fly over your house and just not take the roads, you know, and make your own little highways in the sky, if you will. The problems with this machine that I'm flying right now is the flight time is just so short, you're getting about, the efficiency of it is about six seconds of flight time a gallon. And there's really not getting much more than that out of it. People are trying to use some injector units with it and stuff, but you, you get a hotter reaction, and that's a problem for the catalyst if you're doing that. So the way uh, what we're working on now is, is a turbine design and not a, ducted, not a ducted fan thing, an actual turbine that you'll be powered by that, and it'll be ducted itself, but not running a, a bigger, you know, two bigger fans like people have seen, you know, of recently. And, um, and these machines, you know, you can, you can, they can fly for close to an hour's worth of time just depending on how much fuel you want to carry. So, you know, you've got one guy in a pack, you've got an air show, but if you've got two guys in there, you've got a sport, you know, and you can really make something of this, and it's, um, it's just something that's not out there now. And I don't know who's out there working on them, but, you know, we are definitely on the move. And, uh, you know, for the fact that I've been flying these for close to 16 years now, it, it allows me to, to uh, make sure the flight characteristics are right and figure out what it's, what it's going to take to make these things flyable and safe, you know. And then you, you put a ballistic chute on this thing, and you've got, you know, you're, you're safe 10 feet off the deck. So that takes care of the man factor that everybody's kind of worried about. The people that are the engineers, like, you know, but you, you have this man factor, and you've got to be careful with that with the turbine. You have these complications with whatever. So, um, yeah, we're just moving forward on that, and we're getting it out there as soon as possible. We, we'd hope to have it out this year, but it's more looking like next year when I'm not there and there's nobody working on it. So I've been really busy this year, and uh, that's why we're looking for another pilot. We're going to train another pilot so that we can, somebody can accommodate a bunch of these shows as well as myself and, and give it time to work on our projects as well. So... It's, um, you know, turbines are the way to go. And I assume we're going to be seeing you on the air show circuit. Yeah, definitely. We've got, we're just filling up bookings here, like left and right, the book's just getting filled up. So we, uh, it's such a great crowd pleaser. The thing's about 130 decibels. It's generating just under 800 horsepower. And to see that, and just see a man suspended with a pack, you know, and watching what the machine is capable of, you know, you can really fly it backwards before I can take off spiraling upwards and, you know, and turn out in any direction and, uh, it's just a, it's a wow for the whole crowd, without a doubt. Little kids to 80 years old, I mean, it's, it's the same jaw-dropping, you know, experience. You're too, you have a hard time processing what you're seeing. Well, I know when the first time I saw it, all the words that were coming out of my mouth started with holy. Because I was <laughs> just trying to figure out, like, what is, that's just not right, you know. But it is, but it's totally real. And, uh, and it's so loud, it's a great, you know, the, the noise is a great factor with it. And then just watching the flights, you know. Or, and me, it's just a, it's a super... I'm just really lucky to have this opportunity, you know, to be in front of kids and talk to kids. You know, this is a dream that was made a reality. And anytime you can show that to people and explain that to them, it just kind of gives you more sight of what, you, what it is you dream about. A lot of people get their dreams shot down through their lifetime. But, you know, if you can, you can touch a kid's life early, you might be able to anchor that into them and let them know that anything's possible.